Hey, how's it going guys? Zara here. So yes, as you have read the title of this video, and uh, clearly you can see that I'm not exactly having the best of times with Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. So at this point, I wanted to share my thoughts and you know continuation from my review that I made a few days ago, in fact a little more than a week ago, uh, since my first impressions on the Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. And so after playing through the game a lot more uh, than I initially did, I'm at the 30 hours mark and I am taking my sweet time with this game as well since I'm going to achieve that 100% completion. I am contemplating and actually more likely that I actually will not be going for a platinum trophy on this game because this game isn't exactly my forte as initially that I expected because mind you I got the platinum trophy for Final Fantasy 7 uh, remake and I just like I can't br bring myself over and just you know uh, replay this game all over again just for that platinum trophy just for that hard difficulty mode because now like after playing the game on medium difficulty I've just like toned it down to an easy because remember I'm doing all the side quests everything included 100%ing all the maps as well and regions within this game so obviously it's actually going to be a little bit overbearing and maybe that's just the thing maybe that is why I'm feeling so well, I'm not sure if it's the right word to say that I'm feeling lost with this, within this game. And it's not like I'm immersely, like incredibly uh, addictive that I'm feeling lost within this game. But instead it's a little bit more of a disappointing side. It's just like more or less of a checklist of Ubisoft titles that you would have expect and seen already. Now there's a lot of components that has been implemented, for example, like Ghost of Tsushima, that's just a literal ripoff. And I mean, it's not really, maybe it's not really an original idea to having like some birds or some pets will be able to guide you to the some uh, objectives, even though in Ghost of Tsushima, it's actually done far better than it uh, was down here because you can still see where you need to go for those objectives to complete. And of course, there's again, these markers that you need to go these to these towers. They unlock the way, well, they unlock the objectives for you to do and to accomplish. And yet, you know, it just get it can be quite overbearing. And another thing, another thing, I don't think it's that they are done or executed poorly, all these objectives that you require to do within the world. It's weird, very weird feeling that I'm getting out of this. It's just that after playing through this game and continuing playing and seeing so many cool and unique things as well, it's just getting under my skin to the point of just like, oh my god, I love this game and yet I'm so fucking disappointed as well. You know, that it's a very hard feeling to explain and to, you know, just to say what am I actually feeling, feeling from this game? Am I having great time or am I having a bit of a negative time with it but no it's just a little bit of a mixed feels that i get from it it's very weird there's so many components so many objectives so many things that you can do within this world this is really done well and some of them are mundane things some of them are actually just like what's the point of this being in here and yet i i can understand the reasoning since this is a very very hefty game and i, I want to say that this game is a little bit well extremely bloated and not in a good sense of things because actually i felt there already in final fantasy 7 remake and mind you there wasn't so many side objectives or side quests that you had to do like it was in rebirth but in rebirth it's like double to triple the amount of times and it's it really is getting under my skin to the point i'm just like oh my god i'm starting to dislike this game and you you see like if you want to go for 100 percent of the game you can really see the negatives within this game that you would not like at the end of the day, unfortunately. And I'm not gonna sit here and argue and say that this game is bad. My goodness, it is not. Now, there are some pretty cringy moments that happens, for example, like this dire needs of circumstances that you need to go through this world as quickly as possible, but no, you're playing these mini games out here and taking your sweet time, there's like end of the world, and yet you're just like taking your time and just going through these checklists. You see, like it's kind of uh, not done well. I think that the way they should have actually implemented all of these features here, for example, finish the game, like the story, and then somehow implement all these backgrounds, side objectives, components, side games as well, and just have fun with it afterwards. But again, because they have done it this way and actually made it mandatory during through the story, that's not exactly good news or a good thing, I personally think. 
Now, I admit, though, the amount of side quests here are insane, and some of them are actually done so well, I was actually genuinely surprised how great it was. And to, <laughs> I'm just, for example, the one big side quest that be, that's being in here implemented is so good, really, really good, is the Blood Queen. The Queen's Blood, right? Basically, this card game is so, so addicting. I love it. Like, at first, I was, like, really like thinking, do I really like this game mode? This card game within Final Fantasy VII Rebirth? No, man, if this is really well done, and I love it. Like, I ended up making sure that I complete every single side quest, and, of course, card games included. And, you know, I was actually at first following a, a checklist, right, going through like 100%ing a whole game. But then I did this 100%, I come like, not to the point just completing the whole map, but also picking up every single materia, every single thing, every single component that you don't even need for like platinuming it. Until I realized, wait, what's the point of me having all this stuff if, if it's not necessary for the platinum trophy? And so I just started completely ignoring the checklist and only making sure that the checklist I do is for the trophies and not like 100, 100%ing it with this game. And because of this, as you have heard already from many other people, maybe you have experienced it for yourself as well. If you try to go for 100%ing the game, you may end up actually hating the game afterwards, even though it could be an incredible story. It's actually, well, the main game that I definitely noticed is definitely would be uh, Red Dead Redemption 2 as an example. If you want to 100% that game, get the Platinum Trophy, you will end up hating the game at the end of the day. Because the story was phenomenal, fantastic, masterpiece, but yet if you go for that Platinum, oh my goodness, you will regret everything. And I'm feeling the same situation here from Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. And you know what makes it even worse, personally, for me? <laughs> it's that... Oh my god. It's actually that there's still one more installment coming up. There's still one last uh, trilogy of Final Fantasy VII games that is still will be coming out sometime maybe in three to four years. And after knowing that, and then I'm seeing what I had to go through just to experience all of this all over again, it's just like... Oh my god, I don't want to. Please, please make it stop. <laughs> but yet also, another thing. I started to really notice regarding its combat. I, is, is it me? But I feel like the combat within this game started becoming a lot more convoluted. The implementation of actually having counterattacks and counterfeits, basically every time you block you can also initialize uh, and additional buttons for your uh, group members or parties that they can do a counterattack as an example. Like they're just including extra tidbits of, uh, you know, information into the combat. I really thought it was really unnecessary. I do like the synergy skills or like combination of two people combining together and going up against like a foe or whatnot. That was a brilliant move. I love that. Uh, but the thing, another thing, what's with this? Okay, so you can actually have three other members with you going through this adventure. But then I'm like seeing in the background there, there's way more obvious like groups there. So why can't we have like maybe six to seven members instead? Because obviously you will bond, you will have more people coming into your group or your party. So why can't I just have a whole party like being a part of this like me controlling able to control every single one right why do I have to why do i have to choose which party uh, i like to have while going through this adventure even though i can clearly see like i never chose barrett and yet he right he look he's over there standing by the area what's he doing nothing it's or like it's stupid decisions i think they should have actually expanded the party and not limited to four people like you know within this character list anyway they should have done a far more and larger in scale and size i don't know why they didn't do this before maybe it will become a little bit too overbearing like i mentioned but uh, i don't know there's so many stupid decisions that have been made here here. For example, also, this is need a lot more polish in terms of what you can do within the world of the characters, like when you're running through this open world, right? There's like, okay, they cannot go through here, can I not go through here? And so you're kind of guessing a little bit. And there's some polishes needed to be done, for example, the climbing and the scaling of the walls. It's, uh, whatever, I guess it's not, it's maybe a nitpicking situation right now that I'm doing. Now, regarding if the characters, uh, I'm starting to dislike Cloud. I'm starting to dislike Cloud. Like, one moment during the story, he's all menacing, he's all, like, depressed. 
I mean, I, I kind of understand his reasoning as well, why he's like a stoic, soldier-like experience that he's going through. But yeah, when you're starting to notice as well that he's been going through all these adventures and quests and side quests included, yet he kind of opens up one moment, some of the side quests, some of the other quest, main quests as well, like he opens up, right? But then he just becomes a lot more stoic again, depressed again, quiet down, and then negative in thoughts, always like aggressive as well it's just uh, his character development is like all over the pace like this game is all over the pace you know in terms of the story and the storytelling such a weird move and st the way they decided to go about this like just this whole game experience is just fucking drags on it's such a drag and due to this this is a big minus i have to give this to this game big minus this game fucking drags and to the point it's not like it's bad the game right even the story content and the main and the main and side quests they are pretty good but my goodness what is going on with the amount of stuff that you have to do here some of them are like totally unnecessary and well some of them are totally necessary even for the main objective and yet it makes no sense there's so many things weird here that I'm just like really starting to see negative light within Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. Uh, Square, Square Enix, the developers of Final Fantasy VII and, you know, continue on the third installment of it. Tone it down, please. We don't need so much fucking bloat. Calm the hell down. I don't need a hundred hours of experience of this game because it's just basically bloat more or less. You end up doing more same the same thing. You know, at some point I'm just like considering and you know, uh, just contemplating if I should just stop going for this 100%. Maybe at the, maybe afterwards I'll actually end up liking it more because of this. Now there are some other problems like within the story, like I mentioned regarding Cloud, especially like he's just like totally different character every time, every other mission. And it's just like one, once he's depressed, once he's more or less of a joke maker, if that makes sense. Yeah, Cloud doesn't work for me any longer, and uh, he's overstayed his welcome. I feel like this whole game's just overstaying its welcome. Either way, guys, do let me know as well. I'm sure a lot of you will feel, well, very, very negative about this video as well that I'm making. And I'm just sharing my thoughts. I think that this game is overdone to the point it's just too much, and not in the good ways as well that it's overdone. Anyway, that's all I wanted to share. Thank you so much for watching. I will have a proper, proper review after when I finish the whole story. And, you know, just give you my real thoughts. Like, have they been changed? Is it still a little bit that I'm seeing this game in a negative light? Or perhaps maybe it kind of redeemed itself for me after when I experienced the story. Anyway, guys, do expect a full review coming up after when I finish the game. I think I'll only a few more days. Like I said, I'm still taking my time with it. Like, there's some occasions I don't even want to fucking play the game because it just drags his ass for way too damn long. Anyway, thank you again. I'll see you guys all.